I am really excited about today's video. It's gonna be a one out of two part series where we will discuss new testing that is coming to the channel for waxes, sealants, and coatings. Today, we're gonna to really focus on ultraviolet light testing. This is the ability of a wax to provide protection for paint from ultraviolet rays, specifically UVA in our case. Now, we're gonna compare a bunch of different products that I've already tested and we will test one together to show you guys whether or not a wax really provides the kind of protection that a clear coat does or even something like sunscreen. So let's get started. The very first thing I wanna show you may seem silly. It is essentially a Rubbermaid container and it has what is clearly a lamp in it. It's quite warm on a lead and that's plugged into the wall and it's held on by a C-clamp. Now you might think this seems silly, but what that light is, is a, a reptile light that provides UV, UVA and UVB specifically for bearded dragons and all kinds of other critters that need that light when they're held indoors in a terrarium. Now what I've done is I've kind of benchmarked this light against the sun here in Houston. It is winter time, but our sun is still very strong. There's a lot of UV. And the timing is actually very similar. Now you're probably wondering, what do I mean by timing? Well, I actually mean the exposure rate of this cyanotype paper. Cyanotype is an early photographic process where essentially paper is treated with chemicals that react to UVA light. Here's a tiny little sliver of that paper. And as you can see, it's kind of light baby blue. Now when it's exposed to UV, it'll turn white, specifically when it's exposed to UVA actually. Now, when that white piece of paper is put in water, it'll flip color and the white will become dark blue. And if it's not exposed to UV light, which I'll show you right now, it will become white. So there we go, see it's become partially white. Now, if I actually stick this under the lamp and we'll let that sit there for a minute. Now, while that little piece of paper sits there and kind of bakes in, what I could show you guys is a cyanotype print that I made from an aloe flower. They grow right here in my yard. And this print, it sat here under the lamp and it blocked the UV light. So when I put this under water, the colors flipped and the white that was exposed to the UV became blue and the white that wasn't exposed to the UV, well actually the light blue, it turned white. So just like you saw me, take that little sliver, dip half of it, and turn it white into the water. And we can tell it's basically become all white. But let's go and stick it in here in this water and kind of leave it out. We'll leave it out and we'll see what happens with it over time. Now guys, like I mentioned, cyanotype reacts to UVA light. UVA light is the most predominant UV radiation that we get. UVC is entirely blocked by our atmosphere. UVB is almost entirely blocked and UVA comes through. Now UVB is what's responsible for the painful sunburns that we get and UVA kind of goes deep into the skin and it's what actually tans you. We used to think UVA is not harmful, but now we know better and we know that tanning beds and other things like that that use UVA can certainly cause cancer and other problems and they actually age your skin and make your skin look bad. Now we know cyanotype reacts to UVA. So how can we use that to do a test? Well, what I did is I took a small piece of cyanotype paper outside in my Houston sun and I let it bake until it went totally white. It took roughly four minutes. Now it's winter time, I'm sure it'll be faster in the peak of summer, but I'm working with what I got. I took this paper inside and I tested it under that lamp and it took the same four minutes. So that lamp is putting out the kind of UVA that the sun's putting out right now. Pretty impressive. So what I did is I took another square of that cyanotype paper and I exposed it to the UV, but I covered it up minute by minute. This is what the paper ends up looking like, and hopefully you guys can see that last gradient. Now YouTube uses 8-bit color, so you might not be able to see that very last uh, gradient, and this was zero minutes, one minute, two minutes, three minutes, four minutes of exposure, and then I've given it a point score. Zero if you're fully exposed, two if you're a little, four if you're less exposed, eight if you're even less exposed, and 16 points if you get no UV exposure at all. And so this paper, I'm gonna use it as a comparison strip. So if let's say you're 
darker than a two but lighter than a zero, you'd get one point. If you're the same as a two, you'd get two points. So I'm sure you can see that while I've been showing you that this paper has started to turn blue again. The blue is where we've had the UV exposure, and the white is where we didn't. Now here's just a regular piece of glass I got from Lowe's. I actually got a bunch of them so I could do many tests at once. And glass will block all of UVB. Pretty much any thickness, any kind of glass, it'll block UVB. For us, it's totally fine that we're blocking UVB because cyanotype reacts to UVA. So essentially this piece of glass will simulate the clear coat. The strip underneath of this paper will simulate our paint and this is going to be our protection. What we're looking for is to see that the paper strip does not expose to UVA as quickly once the protection is applied. We want to see that at four minutes, it's not as dark having been fixed with the water as the last four minute strip on our test because our test had no protection on it at all other than a piece of glass. And I know that this product recommends a wet application, but you can do it dry as well. I've tested it. The dry application actually works better in my opinion, or at least it gives better results. So now we're gonna take our towel. We're gonna kind of smear the wax around. We're gonna get the towel flipped over. So there we go. We should now have a nice waxed piece of glass. We're gonna let that sit for 24 hours and let it cure so that it has the best shot. What I have here is a 24 hour cured piece of glass with 303 graphene on it. If you've liked my videos so far, I'd love it if you click subscribe or click like, and even just left me a nice comment down below. It makes a big difference to me and I love interacting with all of you. Also, I wanted to ask you guys to remember that there are Amazon links down below in the description. Those are the products that we're testing today as well as some of the equipment I use. Even if you don't wanna buy that particular stuff, if you click through and do any Amazon shopping, I still get a small commission at no added cost to you and it allows me to do cool stuff like this that hopefully you find value in. So let's get back to our testing. Now guys, I'm actually gonna put this camera inside our box here, raise our lamp so that it's not exposing UV. We're gonna put down the sample paper kind of in the middle here and then we're gonna take our 303 graphene and we're gonna set that right down. So now we're gonna move the lamp down and focus it on our paper and we're gonna kick off our stopwatch. And now our camera down there will be recording how the paper changes. Now it is important to let this lamp heat up for a while. When it initially turns on, it's not gonna be producing the kind of output that it does at peak. So I let it run for at least 15 minutes. And if I'm gonna do a bunch of them in a row, I'm not gonna turn it off. But here in a few seconds, I will be turning it off to pull the sample out since I'm not gonna do any more tests tonight. So 53, 55, 55. Wow, I got it four on the dot. And hopefully the camera here can see what the sample has come out like. There's our sample right there. You can tell it's a little blue, but mostly turned white. So there's been a lot of UV exposure. So now that we got our sample, let's go fix it with the water. And here it is again, very slightly blue. And we're gonna put this in the water. Let's go ahead and pull that bad boy out. It's been a minute and you can see it's turning nice and kind of blue, like that baby blue like it was before, but it'll turn dark blue as it dries out. Now I do put this into my cabinet over there where it's nice and dark for 24 hours to make sure it's not being affected by any light or anything like that. And then I will compare it to that initial strip with a gradient in it that I showed you. Now, so far it's hard to tell how exposed it'll be. It still had some blue on it, so I think it could score a point or two. For now, I'm gonna stick it into this box and we'll come back to it and check it before the end of the video. As I mentioned, I already made some samples. So I could show you guys some samples. This is some of the ceramics we've been testing. And what you can see is that most of them, and again, 8-bit color on YouTube is gonna make it hard, most of them are pretty dark. You can see this one is really dark and these are lighter. And what that's telling me, and again, you can see all of them are kind of like that, 
is that most of these products really don't provide a ton of UV protection. Now we can look at these two, which is the Atom Ceramic Spray Coating and the Meguiar's Hybrid Ceramic Liquid, and we can compare them to our chart. Now what we can do with the sample is now compare them, and again, the YouTube 8-bit may come to hurt us here, but I can tell that it's definitely darker than the four, it's definitely lighter than the zero, and I'm gonna say it's very close to the two. Now let's look at this Atoms. What can we tell with this? Well, it's definitely darker than a four, and I would say it's definitely darker than a two, but is it as dark as a zero? And my eyes are saying it's just a hair lighter. So I think, and this may not show up on YouTube because of the 8-bit color, but I think it's a one. So I'm gonna give it a one. So let me show you guys some other samples. And in here, you suddenly see there are some light colored ones. And I will show you these two light colored ones. The first one, and it might be hard to read because I used a pencil, it is HEB's, which is a local grocery chain, uh, Ultra SPF 70 sunscreen. So you could see that it definitely provides some UVA. You know, in the middle it got darker, but at the edges, you know, it's almost an, you know, I don't know, somewhere between an eight and a four. It's uh, lighter than a four and darker than an eight. So that might be a six or something like that. Now, this one here is clear coat. And clear coat, as we can tell, is right up there with an eight. Clear coat does very well. And what this is showing me, guys, is that with all of these, all of these products I've already tested, there's more in here, that's, that's not even all of them. Look at how many I've tested. What it's telling me is that waxes, in general, don't really provide UV protection. Not like clear coat, not like, well, clear coat here, and not like this SPF sunscreen. Uh, the sunscreen's obviously not as good as the clear coat, and I'll talk about that too. I always thought waxes provided UV protection. I've even told friends, hey, that's one of the reasons you want to wax is to provide UV protection. Clearly, that isn't quite the case. They don't really provide meaningful protection. In fact, out of the dozens of products I've already tested, the highest score I gave was a three. And I believe that was the Gion Cure that got the three. Now, even with the sunscreen, I was a little shocked about that. It's letting a lot of UV through. I, you know, more than clear coat for sure. And you know, you spray it on SPF 70, that's a lot of sunscreen. Usually you spray that on, you don't really feel the burn, but you do get tanned. I mean, I'm you know, relatively tanned living here in Houston and I do throw that stuff on when I go fishing or whatever. So the explanation is that actually SPF relates to UVB protection, not UVA protection. This particular sunscreen actually has UVA protection in it, but in America, we don't really have a standard for UVA. And again, it used to be considered that UVA is not even bad for you. And in Europe and Asia and a few other places, they actually have an SPF style rating for UVA. So guys, before I do the wrap up and give you my thoughts, I wanted to show you how this is coming along. And you can tell it's definitely getting darker blue and I expect that it'll get pretty darn blue within 24 hours. For now, I'm gonna put it back and let's do a quick wrap up. So does this mean that we've been misled or lied to by the auto care industry? Maybe, let's talk about that in a second, but let me first read you something that Mike Phillips posted on the Meguiar's forums. Mike Phillips, if you don't know, is I believe the director of training for Auto Geek. So the question was, do car waxes provide real UV protection? And he says, some waxes do contain UV protection agents, but the amount of protection that a microscopically thin layer wax can provide is limited. The primary goal of a wax is to protect the top layers of paint that contain UV protection agents. If you wash and wax your car regularly, your paint will be protected and you should suffer no major UV damage over the normal course of the life of the car. So guys, what Mike is really saying here is that it's not so much that waxes protect your car directly against UV, it's that they save your clear coat. It is actually very clear how much waxes protect clear coat, especially good waxes and good coatings. If you've seen my other videos where I do my durability testing, when I first provide a control surface that has been polished, which I always polish before doing my wax test, you can see it's initially kind of hydrophobic because clear coat that's been polished is actually relatively hydrophobic because of its kind of geometry, it's very slick. So as soon as I wash though, my first wash, second wash, it is immediately rough and sheeting water and no longer hydrophobic. That is how easily the clear coat roughs up after a good polish and no longer shines well and will over time degrade. So you can see it basically immediately with just a wash. This is why the wax is actually so important. 
it provides that sacrificial layer that keeps your clear coat safe. And as you saw in my test, the clear coat works the best. So far, my takeaway is that the vast majority of products provide little to no protection, and you're gonna see me update the table on my website, a link below. And you will also find that kind of the ceramic products or products labeled as ceramic tended to do better. Another thing to consider, guys, is that through UV exposure testing that I'm doing, the process is very rapid. I'm not allowing for a very fine measurement, which means that although these products may be providing a little bit, a tiny bit of UV protection, it's hard for me to measure the impact over a long time. So these days, paints and clear coats are also designed to last for many years. Even if left outside, they're designed for, to last for many years. So it's possible that these waxes that provide just a little bit of UV protection that we can measure, that over the course of those years of being consistently applied, they may make a little bit of a difference. It's just very hard to detect that kind of difference in an at-home test. I'm sure if I had one of those fancy, uh, I don't even know how much they cost, you know, those ridiculous UV and uh, they use moisture and UV to do all kind of weather testing on products, that you know, professional companies used to determine how well their products last in various environments. If I had one of those, I'm sure I could give you finer testing, but you could still see there's a drastic difference between clear coat protection, uh, sunscreen protection, and something like a coating or a wax. It's not even in the same ballpark. We will be putting out another video shortly, which will tell you guys the next test that is coming to the channel, which I think you're gonna like even more. So stay tuned for that, and I will catch you guys again really soon.